This video has been produced to help you choose the mobility scooter that is right for you, give you greater confidence and help you to travel safely. When you express an interest in buying a scooter from an approved provider, they may be able to offer you some guidance and practical experience before you purchase. Additional support can be arranged through Shop Mobility. Choosing your scooter. Be aware that there are different models of scooters to choose from. It's important that you purchase a scooter that's right for you. An approved provider will be able to advise you, but here are some considerations to be aware of. Class 2 scooters are limited to 4 miles per hour, whilst Class 3 scooters can be switched to 8 miles an hour. Different sizes of scooter are available, but only smaller ones can go on a bus. Different types of scooter are suited to people of different weights. Seat comfort and access varies. Some seats swivel and some don't. Range is affected by the type of scooter you have, also by conditions which use more battery. Your weight and loads that you carry, use of your lights, cold weather, travelling on rough surfaces and travelling up hills all affect the battery life. Some scooters have a battery level indicator, others don't have this feature. If you plan to go out a lot after dark, you may need to consider better lights. Another important question to ask yourself is where are you going to keep your scooter? Will it fit into your home? Is there somewhere that you can charge it safely? Please be aware that you must not charge your scooter outside with extension leads as this is dangerous. If you live upstairs, will it fit in the lift? Do you need your landlord's permission to store your scooter? Many blocks of flats will not permit scooters to be kept in communal areas. You must not leave your scooter where it will block passageways or fire exits. Third party insurance is strongly recommended. Check to see whether your home insurance provider can offer you this. Understanding your own abilities. It's important to consider that your abilities may change over time and from day to day. Here are some tips to help you recognise whether you're safe to operate a scooter. Your vision enables you to see obstacles in time to avoid them. An optician could advise if your vision is adequate to drive a scooter. Your motor skills enable you to manipulate the controls promptly and look behind you to reverse safely. You will need to make quick decisions which enable you to respond swiftly and safely to the situations that you encounter, so you shouldn't have any other health condition which could affect your ability to use a scooter. Your doctor will be able to advise whether you have the physical capacity and or cognitive ability to operate one safely. If you're in any doubt, speak to your approved retailer and you could also consider asking people who know you well as to whether they believe that you're safe to operate one. Never operate your scooter if you've been drinking or taking drugs, if you've been taking medication which causes drowsiness or when using a mobile phone. Know your scooter. These are all the important features. This is how you get on one that has a swivel seat. All scooters are turned on and off with a key. Make sure that you know how far your battery life will take you and carry out the following checks before you go on a journey. Check your lights and indicators, adjust your mirrors if your scooter has them, and adjust your seat. These are your controls. This is your speed control, and you can switch between different speeds for use on and off road. For class two scooters, there is only a knob to change the speed. For class three, there is also a switch which can be switched to ensure that the maximum is only four miles per hour. You accelerate like this. The majority of scooters don't have brakes and all you have to do is let go of the lever and the scooter will stop within a few feet. To reverse, look behind you and pull the opposite lever to go backwards. This is your basket and your loading bags are behind your seat for shopping, but you must not use your scooter to transport animals or passengers. When you're not riding your scooter or if it runs out of battery, you can move it by freewheeling it. Finally, make sure that you regularly maintain your scooter so it's safe to ride. Use in pedestrian areas. A class 3 scooter must be switched to 4 miles per hour when in a pedestrian area. 
The impact of running into someone on your scooter is much worse than bumping into them as a pedestrian. An accident may cause serious injury. Firstly, think about the time of day that you'll be travelling. Rush hour and lunch times can be busy periods and make your journey trickier. Can you make your trip at a quieter time? Please always give way to pedestrians. Many people have hidden disabilities. They may not hear you even if you call out to attract their attention. They may not see you coming and they might not be able to move swiftly out of your way. Be aware that your scooter is silent. It's important that you follow the same rules that you'd follow as a pedestrian. This includes the green cross code. This is the best way to get on and off curbs if drop curbs aren't available. Please speak to the appropriate parish to request a drop curb or footway if you think one is required on a particular road. When going into a building, think about whether your scooter is small enough to fit and manoeuvre inside and is suited to the task. If you leave your scooter outside any building, be considerate about where you park it. Be careful when passing shop doors as people may be coming out and keep a little away from buildings, if possible, to lessen the risk of collision. Don't create an obstruction and remember that the way into a shop is also the fire exit. Some large stores and supermarkets provide their own scooters for use inside. Waitrose and the Co-op Grand Marche branches will supply you the key. Choosing between the pavement and the road. Where possible, plan your route before venturing out, as there may be many reasons why the most direct route is not suitable for your scooter. Generally, it's better to use the pavement. However, the following conditions might lead you to use the road. There isn't always a pavement, so you are left with no choice but to use the road. There may be an obstruction on the pavement which makes it too narrow further along. For example, it may be bin day. The pavement may be too narrow for your scooter. Is the pavement continuous or does it stop after a distance? If it stops, is there a safe way to get off the pavement? If there are a lot of pedestrians on the pavement, for instance after school or at lunch times, it may be better to use the road. Use drop curbs where possible. Also consider whether your scooter will fit on a pedestrian refuge before crossing a road in two stages. If you must use the road, plan your trip and choose quieter routes or quieter times where possible. Follow the rules as if you were driving a car. Never travel against the flow of traffic. Obey all road signs and traffic lights. Use your lights when appropriate and indicators or hand signals. When you need to manoeuvre, have a good look around you. Signal clearly and if it's safe to do so, proceed with the manoeuvre. Always give plenty of notice of your intentions. Ride confidently, keeping well out from the edge of the road. Only move closer to the left to allow traffic to pass when there's a clear view of the road ahead. When turning right, look all around to make sure it's safe. If it is safe, use your indicator or give a clear hand signal to pull out safely to the middle of the road, just as if you were riding a bike. If it's not safe, pull into the left and cross as if you were a pedestrian. At night or in poor light conditions, make sure that you can be seen by using your lights and by wearing high visibility clothing. Travelling by bus. All wheelchairs and scooters should have a wheelchair passport, which confirms that the wheelchair or scooter is the appropriate size to go on the bus. You also need a sticker to prove that your scooter or wheelchair is roadworthy. You can get this from Liberty Bus at Liberation Station. If scooters are too large or heavy for the bus ramps, which can carry up to 300 kilos only, then by law they cannot be carried. All of the Liberty Bus driving staff in Jersey complete full disability awareness training. Hello sir, I've just come along to give you a hand. And Thank you. Give you some tips on how you're getting on off our buses, okay? Yes. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you're inside the yellow lines, if you would. Liberty Bus provide travel training for people referred by occupational therapy. You need to come over this way a little bit and now come towards me and we need to get ourselves inside here. 
Training is also offered to anyone upon request who may be new to using a wheelchair or scooter or who needs to build their confidence and skills. This is usually on a one-to-one -one basis, starting off with a confidence builder at the Liberty Bus Depot and progressing to using the in-service vehicles. Okay, and if you could make sure so that you actually disengage it and the brakes are on, and also with these particular chairs, you actually need to be sitting in a conventional seat. Yes. Okay, have a pleasant trip. Thank you very much. There we go. You can approach Liberty Bus directly for training support. We hope that you found this video helpful. Travel safely.